Hi everyone, it's Steph from Unplugged Automotive. You probably recognise me, you know, the one that keeps effing around in the background, making stupid comments. Oh, that's just me. Anyway, Simon did mention in, his, in the previous video that we were doing a bit of a, a shakedown for the bikes. Now, we did find an issue. My bike, which you probably noticed in the previous video, the green one, has uh, been found to have a charging issue. Now, a few checks of the battery, the battery is okay, it is a little bit low, which you can expect. However, it's not charging as it should do. The best way to test the charge on your battery, start your bike, get the engine revs up a bit to, I don't know, a bit above the speed, 2000 RPM roughly. You don't have to make a guesstimate because most bikes of our type don't have a uh, tachometer. So, get your revs up, put your main beams on to get everything as high power as you possibly would that you would use at that point. And then test your battery. You should be getting a voltage of around about 14, 15 volts, around about there depending on your bike again. But in my case, I was running around about eight volts and that is way below charging levels and that explains the reason why my battery was nearly flat by the end of the shakedown run. Okay, so I've decided I was gonna have a look into this issue today and I think I found something. So let's have a look shall we? We're here with the uh, test setup for the regulator rectifier. As you can see, I've marked it at web positive, which is battery positive. A, which is the alternator, also known as stator. And you've got the other alternator and the battery negative or body earth. So as you can see, it is a four pin. I have already tested this, but I'm going to show you the process that I've used, which I did some research online, because I'm not exactly what you would call an expert at this, so I've had to learn quite quickly on how to check these things. So all you need is a multimeter. Now, they say a better quality one would be better to get a better reading, but I have managed to get a reading off this one. The new regulator I've received, I couldn't get any readings from it with this multimeter. However, I have checked the uh, wiring circuit diagram, for this uh, particular one, it is the same diagram as that one, which they should all be, they're all pretty standard. Plugged it in and my bike is now charging, so that's a good, that's a bonus. That means it's not a problem with the stator, which I didn't think it was because I had done some tests on it. And the stator was throwing back the voltages and the pulses it was requiring for the timing as well, which makes sense because it ran. Okay, so on with the first test. As you can see, there are multiple tests. There are eight tests you need to do because the setup inside one of these is multitude of resistors, uh, diodes, and you need to check every single setup. So I should have drawn a diagram of the inside of this, which I didn't. I will put up a picture of the diagram now. So as you can see, that's the diagram of the uh, regulator. It is pretty much a four bridge rectifier. So this will basically convert from alternating current to DC current and also has a voltage regulator in here so it doesn't overpower the system. And the last thing you want is something, your battery charging at 100 volts. You, you're gonna have some problems there. Uh, you will have blown bulbs, knackered everything. Okay, onwards to the tests. So I've set my multimeter to 20 to 2000k turn it on so as you can see here test one reverse leak short circuit so the reading should be infinity so this number here one should stay the same because that's reading infinity so okay let's start with the first one so you're positive on the battery positive multimeter and then your neutral or negative multimeter onto the alternator connection. And as you can see, they're both well connected and you've got a infinite reading. So in that case, that's a pass. We can just do a double check on the multimeter to make sure it's working. There you go. We've now got a full open circuit, full closed circuit, sorry, no resistance. Yeah, if you do a check on the meter, multimeter, you can see we've now closed the circuit with zero, zero resistance. Now, if you make the uh, test more sensitive, it does show resistance. 
So that's not a bad thing for a cheap one. Normally the cheap ones don't show you any resistance on the multi multimeters when you connect the wires. Okay, so the first test, as you can see, is infinite. So we're going to call that a pass. Test two. Forward bias should be a very low result. Okay, so I have researched the meaning for forward bias. Forward bias is the DC, also known as direct current, voltage required to maintain current flow in a diode or uh, some types of transistor resistors. I think that's what they called it. Okay, and just a quick diagram of a, of a diode which I've just I drew up a few minutes ago, as you can see there. You have your diode here. This is your diode symbol. Your positive, which is known as the anode. The negative, which is known as the cathode. And the flow direction is that way. If for any reason you have some return flow, the diode will block it. So basically, this just means gate. So it goes in. Uh, see, it can't go past that point now. It'll go that way, but it won't go that way. Now... The reason we're testing for reverse leakage is this way, the seal, as it's called, can be weak and the power can flow back. And that's why we do a resistance test to see if the, uh, the seal is intact. But uh, as you will see, the very first one, the reverse flow, there was no issues. It was fine. So all we're looking for now is uh, the forward bias. So, it is basically the same test, but now we're pushing the power this way, back into this. So positive, negative. So positive will now go on the alternator, and the negative will now go on the battery positive terminal of the regulator. As you can see, the result is 980, I think that's 98 mega ohms. So anyway, result 980. So test three. As you can see now, we're moving around to the next diode. So again, reverse leak, short circuit, should show infinity. So we're gonna to go to now the, the alternator pin that we already used. And then we're going to the battery negative or earth terminal. As you can see, that is also okay. So that's uh, showing infinity according to this multimeter. So that's a pass. Mark it down, so I've got a reference. Test four, same one again. But this time we're swapping the, the um, anode cathodes over. So the negative onto your alternator and the positive onto the battery negative or uh, connection. And as you can see, that one's a really high reading. Uh, 1128. Okay, so uh, that does seem extortionately high. So that's what 112 mega ohms resistance. That's virtually no power flow whatsoever. Yeah. So uh, we'll mark that one down. 1128, wasn't it? 1120. So result 1120. Now, bear with me for if I'm getting my terminology incorrect, you know, I'm not an expert at this. So, if I have named something incorrectly, just comment below, let me know, and then in future I will know that I've got it wrong and I'll fix it. If you don't make mistakes, you don't learn. So, just there, this is a kind of a guide. So, don't, this is not entirely gospel, but uh, it's definitely a help for people who don't know. So, test five. Reverse leak again, so we're seeing if the diode is sending power backwards the wrong way. And as you can see, we're showing infinity, so we've got no issues there. It's not pushing power backwards through it. So this one's a pass. And as you can see, test six. It's now a swap round to see what the forward bias is on it. So... 
your multimeter negative onto your alternator and multimeter positive onto the battery negative terminal and that one's really high as well so 166 no oh, it's going up that can't be a good sign it's actually getting worse as we're testing it so 1692 we'll call it because it just keeps rising so 1690 oh, I think that's a fail test 7 we're now moving around to the next diode so multimeter positive to the battery positive and then the bottom alternator connection that we had on this so we should still, we should be showing infinity and there we are we're showing infinity so that one is a pass and third no not third the eighth final t and final test I don't know I got third from will be also the forward bias to see if the diode has any resistance in a forward flow so swapping over the connectors so battery positive terminal with the negative on the multimeter and alternator to the positive on the multimeter so your resistance is there is 994 it's closing down so we'll call it 992 that's the result 992 so if I'm reading this correctly because it's at 2000 kilo ohms which is I think is mega in mega ohms that means that's 99 mega ohms Again, if I'm wrong, please tell me. On the eighth test, 112 mega ohms on the fourth test, 98 mega ohms on the second test, and 169 mega ohms on the sixth test. Now, that is going by what I could find online. I may have got a bad website, but that's the best I could find. Anyone who's uh, an expert in circuitry, Please let me know if I'm wrong. Anyway, what I can see on here, it does look like they're high resistances, so that is no good. Please like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you have any comments, please comment below. Any issues with what I've just done here. If you think I've done something wrong, again, comment, let me know. I can take it. If you're going to call me an absolute an idiot, then that's fine with me as well. But again, I would rather be told that I'm wrong than to um, give everyone the wrong information. Okay, that's all we've got time for for now. Have a great day. If you enjoyed this video, then smash the like and subscribe buttons for more.